Hey everybody, um, this is video three of the Build Community Project. And so I just want to kind of give a real quick overview. You know, we covered in the last two videos, we covered, you know, just kind of a general, and then we cover what we call the mind, which is the big pool of like-minded people who we get to, you know, use for um, networking. We get to use for, you know, relationships. We get to use for all of those things with the hope that we can recruit out of there uh, into the next phase, which, you know, today, uh, again, we're going to cover the MAG, the Mutual Assistance Group. And so from the mind, we're going to try to recruit out of that and then in the end, try to build the MAG. Uh, from the MAG, you know, again, we're going to do lots of events. We're going to do lots of community building. And hopefully for then, we end up finding our family by driving uh, certain people out of there into the crew. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, I'll see you at the end. Come on, let's check it out. All right, hey everybody, this is Tag Life Done Free. Um, today we present the third video in the series of Building Community. Um, this one will be on the MAG or the Mutual Assistance Group. In the last video, we discussed the outer circle or the mind. Uh, this circle encompasses many like-minded people uh, to who you interact with. At this point, you've been involved in the community. You've attended get-togethers. You know lots of like-minded people. This video will dive deep into the MAG, which is the middle circle. And again, MAG stands for Mutual Assistance Group. This is where the conversations really get much harder. Uh, this is where you begin to consider things like sovereignty and purpose. Uh, point is, if you want something, you must lower your guard and you have to give something. So anyway, so this term is thrown around a lot, and I'd like to begin to ask Spags, Data, and Hitch, and you guys, thanks for joining us again. What is the definition of MAG? I'll start with you, Hitch. Well, I mean, it, it's exactly what it implies. It's your mutual assistance group. These are the, the people that uh, are going to help you out, you know, when the austere times come and you have to circle the wagons. Now, Bobby, you got any addition to that? Um, not really. I think that that's pretty well it. It's, it's the, I like to think of the mag as something that broaches the middle and the outer or the inner and the outer circles. It's kind of that in-between gray area where the rules kind of bend. Data? Yeah, uh, first of all, Tag, thanks for having us on uh, Life Done Free. Uh, Brother Hitch, always a pleasure. Um, senior Specs, always a pleasure. So, um, you know, the, the MAG is a, it's an interesting thing. It's a very um, intricate thing. The MAG is, um, you know, it's a lonely place or it's a popular place, depending on your perspective and who you are. It is, um, you know, a, a wealth of knowledge or it's uh, a place to get lost in a sea of faces. You know, um, the mag is um, the mag is an uncomfortable place. It was an uncomfortable place for me, um, and it's kind of it's it's kind of weird. It's one of those matrix moments when you realize you're in someone else's mag, um, you know, or you realize someone is in your mag uh, for the first time. It's kind of a unique kind of hair on your neck feeling, or at least it was for me. Uh, but the mag is a lot of different things, and it depends on your perspective. If you're uh, an NPC or if you're mm -hmm. um, playing in the game, you know, like all of the people on this this call here, uh, we all have players on the on the board, you know, and we are all working our you know our own magic or whatever our talent is. So, um, yeah, the, the mag's a unique thing. It's a pretty interesting thing. Yeah. Well, you know, for for me, I think uh, do we lose Bobby? Oh nope, there he is. Um, you know, I think for me, the, the mag is really, you know, kind of where you take all of this knowledge of all of these people you met and you've kind of, you know, you found some things you like about people and you're really trying to, you know, we always say that it's a clue, not a conclusion. And, um, you know, how you get to the conclusion, you know, how you, how you kind of understand if people will fit from a ethics perspective or a skill perspective or, um, whatever that is. So, so I guess kind of with that, Bobby, what's the goal of the mag? What are you setting out to do? I think that the mag is the most organic of the three circles. Uh, it, it has the most movement and the movement has to be either in or out. So the goal of the mag is to either figure out who needs to be relegated back to the outer circle or into no circle at all, or who needs to be moved further into a level of intimacy. You know, when you're in the outer circle, there's very little organic movement. It's very, it's very arm's length. It's very, uh, how are you doing? I'm fine type stuff. And once you're in the inner circle, you're in the inner circle. Unless you really F up at that point, you're in the circle, right? 
So that mag is kind of the ebb and flow that determines how the tide washes between the other two circles. Yeah, Dato, you want to comment? Yeah, no, um, Bobby hit the nail on the head there. You know, um, Spags is, is probably, um, you know, one of the, the few people in this, this world I would turn to in, in terms of, um, you know, experience in dealing with, with um, mags and mutual assistance groups. Um, he's been around for a while. You know, he's taught um, some classes on this topic, I'm sure. You know, at, at some point, he's did some type of uh, discussion at uh, one of the local meetups. You know, so yeah, no, I I don't think I can add to anything that uh, you know Spags didn't didn't hit on there. A hitch. I would agree with what you guys have said. I mean, it's uh, you know the tie the binds between between the other two layers. So you know it's it's really really important. You know, these are, again um, people that are going to be absolutely necessary when when times are tough. Um, maybe your fallback position too, if something collapses on your inner circle. Yeah, you know, I think uh, uh, Data said it really, really good earlier when he talked about how the mag is complex. And, you know, there's a lot, really a lot to it. And I kind of look at the mag as really two different fronts, you know, the individual front and the group front, because in, in some cases, you know, you're networking with other groups and the mags in most cases, as far as that will ever get. And that will have a different set of uses and a different set of purposes, you know, versus an individual who you're really trying to see, can you move them through the mag and can you actually end up as part of the tribe? Um, so in talking about that just a little bit, let's talk about um, the uses of a mag in networking with other groups. And Bobby, I know you know a lot about this. Let's start with you. Sure. Um, well, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to use a recent example. Is everyone good with that? Okay. Uh, I have my group. It's a group that's been around for a very long time. Other people on this call have their group, and it's been around for a very long time. And both of our groups have been around in an ebb and flow in a one form or another and recently we all got together right that is the mag we might not necessarily be in each other's center core and most of that is because most of us started our center core before we knew each other right but now i know for a fact that if group a needs help because their barn burnt down i can call hitch and he'll be like dude i've put up three or four barns just in the last five minutes i got you and he'll show up I can be like, hey, Data, uh, some stuff just went down with my crops. All the stuff I had just failed. Can I get some clippings from you? And him and his and his wife are going to give me some clippings. And then same with you, Tag. If I need a place to go zero in my brand new rifle, I know that I can call Tag and he's going to say, sure, come on out. And I think that that's ultimately what the group meetings for the MAG is designed to do is 20, 30 years into this lifestyle, we're going to realize there are people that we really, really like and that we really, really have an affinity with, but they've already, they're already established and we're already established. So how do we establish ourselves together? Well, we have these big get togethers within the mag and we allow the, those, those, that evolution of personality. Um, uh, what's the word? I want, the marriage of personalities to happen. Yeah. Data, you got a comment on that? Yeah, you know, the, the mag is a, uh, you know, like, like we talked about, it's kind of a unique um, kind of organic kind of complex thing. Um, it, it kind of becomes its own thing. And like I mentioned before, um, it, it really is kind of neat in networking inside the mag um, for all different sorts of reasons. I mean, I, I've seen, um, you know, uh, sharing of resources in terms of, you know, large purchases of uh, meat or or bulk food purchases or etc. Um, I've watched it lead to lumber purchases, uh, you know, building material. You name it. Over the last decade or so, I've watched some very very cool and organic deals take place in the mags that I I participate in, and uh, and some of those you know are, are uh, some people you know playing the long game and you know always looking for a deal and there's nothing wrong with that because that's the best kind of uh, time or best kind of deal, I guess, to have is when you can get others to go in on on a deal like a, a cow or, um, you know, or a big chunk of lumber or, or uh, steel. So uh, networking inside the mag is it's uh, it's got its advantages, uh, especially if you've got, you know, um, some worthwhile people in your mag to, to network with. 
Yeah, I think that's a good point. We're going to get back to that. But before we go on, Hitch, you got a comment about that? No, I would I just expand on that as well. I mean, likewise, if you are selling something or giving something away, you know, and you no one in your local tribe or inner circle needs it, you know, the mag is a great place to, you know, take that next layer out and, uh, you know, bless those people, you know, with, with that thing or, or uh, deal. Yeah, I had a comment on my channel in one of my last couple of videos where a, a young lady said that uh, she had some extra tomato starts. And uh, so she just brought them over to the neighbor, you know, and said, hey, here you go. And I thought, and I replied to her, I said, this is exactly what building a community is. You know, little, itty, you know, little itty bitty steps. And, and um, you know, I think for me, for the from a group perspective, you know, networking amongst the groups, you know, we were just at an event not long ago where I know there was at least four groups out there, you know, that I was aware of. And I'm sure there was some that I wasn't even aware of um, that was out there. But I think there's a lot of things we can do together. You know, Bobby mentioned building the barn. You know, there's, um, you know, some people that uh, I know that, you know, roof uh, ceiling in a living room was falling down. And so a whole bunch of us got together and, you know, went and got the material and, and, you know, put their ceiling back in their house for them, um, you know, because again, it was a, a danger thing. So I think there's a lot of advantages to, you know, to doing this. I've uh, done business with, you know, many of the groups outside of, you know, my inner circle personally, you know, to whether it was to buy weed or to buy, you know, whatever it is. And so I think there's a lot of advantages to spreading your resources, I think, but to a point that Hitch said, I think first you got to look inside the inner tribe first, you know, right. And so if you get a great deal on something lumber, you know, you want to make sure that inside that tribe, that first tribe, you're looking there first, then out to the mag, and then, you know, and you just, you know, continue out and, you know, kind of in an effort to build. But um, so the other part of the mag, and I was talking about this earlier, is the individual side, right? And that's how an individual goes from, you know, the mind to the mag, and then, you know, ultimately to the tribe. And so um, I'll start with with uh, you, Data. So when how does someone move from, an individual move from the mind to the mag? I started to touch on it earlier and I'm backed out. Um, but, you know, you and I, we, we've had this discussion many, many times. In fact, I, we've had this discussion, I think, um, all of us in this call at some point or another, but um, everyone knows, or at least most that know um, anything about sales know that the key to any deal is time and pressure. And, and that tends to be the kind of the, the case for moving in and out of the different rings um, of, you know, the, the crew and the mag and the inner circles and outer circles. Um, is time and pressure, you know, being being in uh, experiencing activities like the thing that we just did recently at the camp out, you know, for the Midwest Preparedness Project, um, like we've talked about in your previous, you know, in our previous videos, getting out and participating, getting out and being active in your community, um, being active in those those MeWe and social media places, um, and, and then going out to those public events. Um, that's how you get in and out of the mag. That is how you move from ring to ring or level to level or however you want to look at it or describe it. Um, for me, I think that's how I gauge and, and um, you know, weigh those things is by the quality time that we spend together at those events or away from those events. Um, and then the pressure of, you know, us, us being around each other and seeing how well we click, you mm -hmm. know, or seeing how well um, we work together. Although, you know, that's generally, I think what I look for is, uh, people that help me um, bolster my weaknesses and, and, you know, magnify my strengths. Hitch, you got a comment? As far as um, moving people through the Yeah, how do, you get, how do you get from the outer, you know, from the mind into the mag? Sure. Um, you know, Mr. Spaggs uh, has eloquently compared this to dating in the past, and yeah. maybe I'll, I'll touch on that something, a um, little anecdotal story here. Uh, you know, because you, you got to understand when you're bringing people in, you're interviewing them and wanting to know if there's any, you know, red flags, right? And uh, I had a, a, a female friend of mine some years ago, uh, speaking on dating and how to determine if someone had a, a serious STD or, you know, some other thing that you really didn't want to get involved with. And so she was talking about how in the dating circle, she would uh, be talking to somebody and say, suggest, hey, let's go donate blood. There's a blood drive down here in my community, and I really like to be community-minded and blah, blah, blah. And she said the guy was like really, you know, him and hawing like, well, uh, uh, well, uh, I can't. I've got hepatitis. Oh! <laughs> <You> know, she, <laughs> so she's like, okay, well, there's that. And, uh, you know, I, I think about that, that story that she told me. 
and you know how that could similarly be applied to people that might be moving into your mag or you know even your inner circle particularly you know there's clever ways you could find out if somebody is a, a violent felon i mean you know if someone's a, a registered sex offender they're probably on a list now i, I will say this some indian reservations their sex offender list does not show up on state or federal lists so that's something to keep in mind someone may not be you know on, on the lists if you think they are but um but otherwise, you know, clever ways to find out if someone's got some sort of dangerous or risky behavior history. Um, you know, and this, this goes along with like sales, you know, opening up discussions. Maybe it's you mentioned some family member that was a bad drug addict or bad alcoholic and you allow that discussion to ebb and flow and someone might convey to you that, yeah, I'm a recovering alcoholic and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I mean, you, you know, you get a, get a, a temp test the temperature on it, you know, but I think it's pretty important, important to find these clues and then you know work your way to conclusions because once you get to that that mag level you're opening up certain layers of opsec right i mean there's certain things you're sharing at that level that you wouldn't share in the mind but you would share in the mag yeah we're going to talk a bunch about opsec today but uh before we go on bobby i don't know that i could add to what's already been said time pressure and yeah fleshing stuff out I guess I could add a uh, play conflicted with these guys around a campfire. <laughs> yeah. we, we've recently seen examples of how that turns out. Yeah. So, I mean, um, yeah. Me. <laughs> you, you know, I think that um, what it, kind of what everybody alluded to is that um, the mag is really where you get through the honeymoon. Right. I mean, because when you first yes. meet somebody, you know, everything's great and everything works good and you really don't know what they're made of until you can get them under pressure. And there's a lot of ways, you know, Hitch, you talked about this, but there, there's a lot of ways to do that. You know, you, you give me a, a new person or, you know, someone who's, you know, working their way through and you take them out to my farm and let me have them for a Saturday. I'll tell you a whole lot by the end of the day, because, you know, I won't eat lunch. I won't stop for breakfast. I won't, I'll just keep, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. And then we're going to figure out, you know, pretty quick what, um, you know, what kind of mental fortitude somebody has, you know, and how that they, you know, can, can push through. But I think, just to kind of sum it up to me, what the mag really is, is how we go from a clue to a conclusion and how you get through that process. And that process can take years. You know, I'll uh, just tell a real, real, real brief story. I've got someone who I've known a long, long time. I've been friends with a long, long time. And it took me about a decade or, you know, eight or nine years, you know, to figure out that they're really self-serving. You know, what they're really interested in is taking care of themselves. They're not interested in, in the rest of it. And it took a long time to get there. It doesn't make them bad people. They're fine, you know, and we're going to be buddies along the way. But these are really important things to know, because as Bobby uh, so eloquently said in video one, you know, can I trust you with my life, my wife and my wallet? Yeah. Right. And how do we get them from, hey, this is great. Good to see you at the expo. What are you buying today? Or wasn't that a great class all the way to I'm leaving. I'll be back in a day. Please take care of my kids. Right. It's okay to it's okay to bait the field. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's nothing wrong with baiting the field. Absolutely. I don't care what anybody says. It's part yeah. of the, the conclusion process. That's right. Man, when your kids' lives and lives other than your own are on the line, bait the field and figure out what bites. Yeah. These are not the droids you're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to sell me death sticks. <laughs> you know, I think another important thing we should talk about is you know, when you're making a decision to take somebody out of the mind and move them into the mag, what are you considering? I mean, is it just virtues? Is it just, you know, honor and character and, and commitment and, you know, attitude and those kind of things? Or is it also skill? I mean, are you looking at, hey, you know what, we're really short on a mechanic, for example. I mean, so someone who's a mechanic and you had a hole as a mechanic, would that then fast track, you know, uh, you uh, going through that process? Hitch? Yeah, that's a great, great question. You know, a lot of people think right away, um, something that Mr. Spaggs pointed out a long time ago in, in a uh, place where he was speaking and I was at, there's going to be all kinds of riflemen just running around everywhere, right? You know, we've got a, a huge number of people with experience from the military that are, you know, all over the country, all over the world. Um, and, but a lot of people think like, hey, I, I need, you know, men with weapons and, and that, that there's truth to that, but there's, there's a plethora of them. Um, they're, you know, your mechanics doctors stuff like that those are all no-brainers you know you need people like that and so um tag you know what you were saying about you know uh what other skill sets there might be there's a guy that i know um from the corporate world and if you were to ask what his job is in the the two corporations that i've seen him involved in mm -hmm. it's 
kind of a complex answer because what I know about this person is he's uh, his job is to negotiate and solve problems and uh, round up cats, you know, mm -hmm. and and he's really really gifted at that. He's really skilled at you know being able to listen to two different opposing people in the same company or in the same group and get them to meet in the middle. And it, that's a really major gift. And if that's all somebody brought to your group or your mag, wow, how, how huge that would be, especially if they were in the mag, really, because, you know, if they're in your group, of course, they're going to help solve problems in your group. But if they're in your mag, they're communicating with other, other groups and, you know, helping you guys bridge gaps and solve problems because we're all humans. There's going to be conflict and someone that's a conflict resolution specialist will say, you know, whether that's what their title is or not, is going to be super, super useful, especially when the stress is on. Um, again, I could be taught to be a plumber. I could be taught to be a mechanic. I can be taught to use a rifle. I can be taught to plant seeds. I can be taught to milk cows. Hmm. But that gift, that talent of conflict resolution, I, I don't think it's something that can be taught really easy. Either you've got that or you don't. Yeah, I think that'll something be interesting. About. You know, as when we get into the, the final video and we start talking about the tribe, I think this will be an interesting topic about I can be taught to be a plumber. I can be taught to plant seeds. I can be taught, you know, I mean, I think this will be a really good, um, really good conversation. And, but just being in your example, Hitch, a con conflict resolution, does that then fast track them, even though maybe the character is subject, uh, suspect, or, you know, maybe they're not as involved. And we're going to talk about this next a little bit about, you know, requirements of a mag and, and, you know, being involved in those kind of things. But I guess what I'm really trying to get at is, in your opinion, you know, are, is, are you fast tracking people based upon skills and overlooking, you know, the long process of, you know, getting rid of the honeymoon and getting to the conclusion? You know, I, I personally, um, depending on the level of need and what I already have, yeah, I could certainly see fast tracking a, a anyone in the medical field who has, uh, let me, let me uh, rate that, who has actual skills, suturing, actual skills, dealing in a you know, where someone's opened up, okay? Because there's all kinds of people in the medical field, but the one individual that I particularly know spends most of their days, you know, inside of open uh, mm -hmm. surgeries. And that to me is really, really important. Yeah. And I've looked the other way about a whole lot of stuff for somebody that could, you know, save my child's life if he falls down and gets something stabbed through his side, you know? Yeah, um, so maybe the answer is if the skill set is something that can't be taught. That would certainly yeah. be grounds to try to speed it up. Sure. And and also just to add to that too, besides the, the conflict resolution, there's other skills that are that are really get overlooked. Um, a person that's a musician, you know, it's got a guitar and can play the guitar or can sing or um, the, the artist, you know, just the person that Bard. gives us Bard. some things to live for, you know, because at the end of the day, the guy that can sit by the fire or the woman that can sit by the fire and sing a song and remember the words, woof. That's huge. You know, again, that's, you know, psychological and, and we need that. Yeah. Kevin and Mary. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Data. Yeah. Well said, Hitch. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the question? Yeah. The question is, is that, you know, is there, are you fast tracking people through into the mag based upon a skill set, you know, ignoring the honeymoon? Or are you going through that process? You know, it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, in, uh, in all the incarnations of, uh, different groups and organizations I've been a part of, I, you know, there are those that would um, fast track based on position or title or experience or role, but I am always accused of being guarded mm -hmm. or cynical or, or maybe a little cautious when it comes to um, personalities. Um, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Maybe if, if uh, the shoe fits, I'll wear it. Uh, but I, I typically tend to not fast track or rush into relationships because, you know, I, I've had this longstanding philosophy and, and it took me a while to get there. And, and I, it was, this is because of experience and getting burned um, a handful of times. But what's, what's interesting in the mag versus what happens after the mag is it's kind of powerful and it's, and it's kind of scary depending on your situation you find yourself in. Once you invite someone to your home, it's hard to uninvite them. Mm -hmm. It's hard to kick them out. Once you allow them to sleep on your couch one time, um, they think it's okay to sleep there again. Mm -hmm. um, and so once you graduate out of that crew and into that mag or from that mag, you know, to the mind and vice versa in and out of those rings, because, because again, like I think we alluded to in earlier um, videos, 
we drift in and out of each other's lives exactly when we're meant to. Mm-hmm. And this happens throughout, you know, different periods of our lives. You know, like like some of us in this call, you know, we, we haven't seen each other in a while. Um, but yet, you know, if I, if I I picked up the phone and, and you it was you on the other end, we would pick up our conversation from the last time we talked, you know, because that's just how we are. That's how we roll. So, mm-hmm. you know, being able to float in and out of the mind, I, uh, the mag and the crew and all that, I, I don't know that I would necessarily rush anyone per se uh, or fast track anyone per se, I guess, uh, based on their, their skill set. Uh, just because, again, a toxic person is a toxic person. You might have spent the last 15, 20 years building this amazing thing and it all to just get pissed away because some toxic doctor or, or whatever skill set it is that you, you're deficient in, um, you know, blows the whole thing up. I, I'm a little reluctant there. I'm a little hesitant there. Anyway, so, uh, Bobby, why don't you tell us about, you know, moving in between the you know, the uh, mind and into the mag and are you fast tracking people based upon skills or is it all just about virtues? Uh, Tell me how that works. As I'm sure one or two or maybe even all three of you have heard me say at least once, every decision in life is an economic (laughs) decision. Fast tracking somebody can be done. I have done it myself, but it has to be done with understanding what you are paying for what you are buying. Mm -hmm. Are there times that I would do it? Absolutely. Would I make a habit of it? Absolutely not. Uh, Data is right. Um, Caution should be exercised. However, because the mag is the organic thing we've discussed, moving from the outer circle to the mag isn't as dangerous as moving from the mag to the group. So if you're going to make an error, it most certainly should be moving from the outer circle into the mag, right? One thing to consider is that what is true is true. And what I mean by that is if the guy or gal you're trying to court who's a trauma surgeon is an asshole, they're an asshole regardless of how long it takes you to move them from the outer circle to the mag. And you're going to find out quicker in the mag what kind of an asshole they are than you will in the outer circle. So if you keep everybody at arm's length at that outer circle until they've proven their worth to be in the group, you're not using the mag correctly. The mag is your proving ground. But I would absolutely echo Data's sentiment that you have to be cautious. And I would absolutely echo what Hitch said. Hitch and I have had this conversation, good Lord, over whiskey at least a dozen times that riflemen are going to be worthless in the apocalypse. Everybody is a rifleman. If you're not at the bare minimum a rifleman, then you're no use to anybody, period. So, yeah, you would have to have an extreme skill if you are a, a trauma surgeon that's worked 15 years in an ER, we, we would probably consider moving you into the mag pretty quick just to, so we could flesh you out quicker. And yes, Hitch, I agree. Blessed are the peacemakers. It'll probably be the most pivotal job needed at the end of the world because everything else is just technicalities and peacekeeping is, is, is a characteristic that can't be taught, in my yeah. opinion. It's also a job nobody wants. Yeah, no one wants to be the negotiator. <laughs> right. right. Unless you're Samuel L. Jackson, then you want to be the negotiator, but only for a movie one time. Yeah, I think, Bobby, you brought up a couple of really, really good points. The first thing is, is the mag is the proving ground. I think that's a great way to say that. I mean, I think, uh, you know, if I could have started this video all over again, maybe we would have began with that, because I think that's exactly what it is. And To the you know, power of editing. Right, well, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the other thing is that it also uh, speeds up the time because the process of getting from point A, the, you know, the mind to, you know, point C, the tribe, man, that's a long freaking process, right? I mean, this is not something that happens over the course of three months. Right. And so maybe in that, the mag allows you to speed up that process a little bit, get people into pressured situations, get them into uncomfortable situations, get them into, com- you know, conversations you talk about, you know, the card game. You know, understanding how they tick and understanding how they work so that you can make a, a, a educated dart throw before you, you know, move on to the next one. I think that was really well said, Bobby. Um, here all day. Talk, yeah, let, let's talk about OPSEC a little bit. So, Bobby, we'll start with you. So how is OPSEC different in the mag than it is in the mind? Uh, varying shades of gray. It's There's no right answer there. Um, if I'm fast tracking somebody based on a super skill, chances are I might tell them a little more than if you're in the mag for the next two years, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe I won't. 
maybe fast tracking means I give you less to see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of gray there, but there is more familiarity and there is more intimacy in the mag. Mm -hmm. Now, there are things I would probably never tell anybody in the mag. For example, I might not tell you how many rounds of 556 I have and where I have it, right? Not until we're maybe the best of friends. But I might not even tell my best of friends that simply right. because, quite frankly, it's nobody's business, you know. Right. So, I mean, that really just depends. Now, with, with my most inner circle, my absolute best friends know where my stuff is because my mentality is if I die on the way from point A to point B, that stuff does nobody any good secretly in a cache somewhere on the side of a highway. Right. My absolute inner circle is going to know probably all of those secrets. In the mag, I would probably start to open up a little more. Um, a range day is probably the best way to describe it. In the outer circle, we're probably not going to the range together. In the mag, we're probably going to shoot together. Mm -hmm. In the group, I'm going to show you the stuff that the ATF doesn't want me to have. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of how that dial might go. So, yeah, I'm probably going to be a little more intimate in the mag, but even so with a level of guardedness. Yeah, Hitch, so how does OPSEC change? From uh, the outer circle to the mag? Yep, from the mind to the mag. Well, I mean, there's more things you'd share, but I, I tend to keep stuff pretty close to the vest until you're in the inner circle. I mean, you know, people in the mag may visit um, various locations that I have or where I where I might, you know, they might know where I am. But um, yeah, I'm going to hold a lot of stuff really close to the vest there just because those people come and go, you know. Yeah, data. You know, uh, kind of like what we we perched on earlier, the inclusion of the mag, you know, is is more intimate, obviously, than the the outside ring. You know that that mind philosophy of where they're just like minded, because there's a chance that if you were in my mag, you will have either came to my home at some point in time to barter with me, or vice versa, I will have came to your home to barter with you, either in some type of livestock or materials exchange or or whatever the fact may be. So my, my mag or the mags that I tend to deal in, um, they tend to be fairly more intimate. So the OPSEC level is, it's it's a little more intimate as well. Um, because if you've been to my house, you've seen my kids' pictures on the wall. You've seen my doctor's appointment reminder on the cork board. You, you know my dog's name. You know, you know what, what um, you know, items I lost in a boating accident last week that aren't conveniently behind the door. Um, you know, so you, you know, those types of things. And so the OPSEC tightens up um, a little, um, I think for some, and, and it loosens for others, depending on where you are again in the mag. So it depends. Um, I, I guess it, it depends on who you are and that, that time and pressure. And if you've actually made it through um, that dating phase and, and, you know, you've, you've got the invite uh, to that level. So I think that it's a good word, invite, you know, and maybe that's a difference is, you know, what, what you're invited to at the mind is different than what you're invited to at the Mac, right? And where you're going and, you know, Bobby mentioned range day or, you know, I'm uh, putting up hay, you know, or, you know, working on a barn or, you know, you know, any of those kind of things. Um, so, Bobby, it's probably safe to say that they get a little more trust and a little more comfort, right? Sure. That kind sure. of sum it up? Sure. I mean, if you want it's not a one-sided thing, no matter how much we like to think we're all the super prepper. The fact right. is it's not one-sided. If you want to learn more about someone else, they're going to need to learn more about you because right. what makes you better than them? Right. Right. I mentioned that at the beginning, that if you want something, you got to be able to give some. Yes. Right. And that's yeah, just absolutely true. You got to let your guard down just a little bit, which is not going to come easy to most people who will watch this video. You know, most sure. you guys know most preppers and homesteaders are pretty recluse and don't really want to share anything, but if you don't share it, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's an yeah. economic decision, man. What are you willing to pay for what you want? That's right. All of you guys in this call, you guys all know me. Um, and, and if you didn't know me, you would just swear that I was this like raging extrovert, um, this ball of energy that, that tries to give away, you know, all of you guys know me. I, I try to give away more energy than I take from people. I do. I spend the majority of my day giving away pieces of myself mm -hmm. and energy um, to everyone I come across, from, from the lady at the gas station that I just paid for gas to the, the people that I'm trying to pitch something to. 
Um, but I'm not. I'm not an extrovert. I, I am a introvert that has to pretend to be an extrovert because of the world I, I have to exist in. So it, it is difficult getting outside of your comfort zone and, and exposing yourself, for lack of a better word. Um, it's, I, I feel like a turtle on his back a lot of times in these events that we go to because this is the raw, real me, you know, my family. My, my wife, my children, my friends, my loved ones, the people I, I you know, give a crap about. Yeah, uh, Hitch, you got any comments on that topic before I move on? No, I think I, I, would, I would agree with Data on that. I, I think that um, that's actually pretty common. People that are good at sales, people that are good at, at uh, speaking and meeting people, you know, the kind of person that doesn't know a stranger quite commonly is secretly an introvert and you know, has to have that recharge time, has to have that time to be left alone and, and frankly wants to be left alone, have to deal with that all day. So yeah. like I can identify with that a lot. You know, I was thinking to ask about, um, so what's off limits, but then my head clicked on and what's off limits you're not going to want to talk about. So um, right here on YouTube, <laughs> right? Um, so I guess I would just Whoa, say- Hang on, let, let, me, let me just go down the list. I'll, <laughs> let me start at the top for you. Okay, so, okay. All right, Dave, I, I stand corrected. Go ahead, sir. What's off limits? first of all your mom <laughs> do, you, do you have blue kool-aid today uh no i today i have coffee sir okay got it so you grew up you're not eight anymore <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, don't I hate had... on my blue dude i, I grew up drinking blue, blue kool-aid with no sugar <laughs> uh, so it was either sugared water or it was blue water that was sour i had one or the other i i had <laughs> typed uh, next to what's off limits i just made a note my wife hmm no, no swinging for me. Yeah. 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 No, I would, I would agree with that. I think um, just to kind of sum up what's off limits is, you know, anything that I'm going to have or anything that I'm going to do that I'm not willing to share with the, a person that I would leave with my wife alone, or I would leave with my family alone is probably just off limits. Sure. Right. Right. I mean, I don't know how, how deep, I don't really think I want to go very deep into this topic just because, well, OPSEC is what OPSEC is. Right. But Bobby, you got anything else you want to add to this today? Trying to touch on it delicately. <laughs> I would honestly say good. that for me, what's off limit has less to do with material possession as it does to do with knowledge. Mm -hmm. you know, there's very little that I have at this stage of my life that I can't replenish. Mm -hmm. And there's very little that I have that isn't so vastly dispersed amongst multiple places where if you came to me and said, I need everything you have in category A, I could probably go, all right. You know, I'm not necessarily, I don't think that for me anyway, the physical material possessions is what's off limits. It's more of the knowledge of the who, what, where, when, and why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, what people, that's what people have to earn the right to know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really, really well said. So let's talk about require. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Hitch. Do we want to talk about the distractions, any? You know, the whole sure. look over here, don't look over there. Yeah. We lead the I'm, way. I'm drawing, a com I'm drawing a complete blank for what that word is. Uh, help me out, Tag. Yeah, so you're talking about misdirection? Misdirection, thank you. Do you yeah. want to talk about that in this, this meeting? Yeah, go ahead and lead the way. Uh, you want to lead into it so we have, we have a marker for where you're going to cut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, I think what uh, Hitch is referring to is, you know, sometimes we do things. I gave the example of um, the golf club before. Um, also, we gave the example of the guy at the camp out who wanted the backpack, who didn't want to pay anything for it. And sometimes we'll do things to make sure, you know, pressure. We talked about that, right? Increasing <clears> pressure. <throat> you know, on a work day, not because you're really a slave driver, but because you're trying to, you know, trying to get to a point. So how much does active misdirection play in the process of moving from the mind into the mag? How did you hit you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So um, you know, do, we, do any of us want to add in or talk, talk about that? So you have something for the meat of the show? Yeah, go ahead. You talk about it and then we'll, we'll go around. Data, you're up now. Okay. <laughs> You know, I, I think there's when we're talking about OPSEC with um, the, the MAG, again, these are not people that are in our inner circle. There's a certain amount of misdirection that might want to be, you know, brought into play. And it's not that you're purposely trying to be deceitful or devious in any way, as much as it is these people are just not completely in your inner circle. So, um, you know, data, you know, you'd mention there may be certain things that uh, may not be out in public or, you know, whatever, um, you know, the misdirection of, Hey, is, is data part of my inner circle? Maybe he's not. Maybe Spags is part of my inner circle. Maybe he's not. 
maybe there's 50 people in my inner circle because we're at this big barbecue and you think that these 50 people are in there <laughs> and the reality is is there's only eight of them you know <laughs> or or the misdirection um you know uh, for me if someone comes and visits you know my, my primary uh, location you know um there's a certain look that that i have around here that makes me look like sanford and son and i like that because it's really easy to hide stuff when it looks like that you know people think oh there's nothing to steal here yeah well <laughs> good yep. um i don't know if any of you other guys practice any active misdirection or not yeah data these are not the droids you're looking for <laughs> move along <laughs> you do not want to sell me death six you want to go home and rethink your life yeah i, I practice act so you're on a Star Wars kick? Because that's like the second time you've quoted Star Wars today. <laughs> no, you know, I, I, I practice active misdirection all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there is a, a Jedi, there is a, a, a weird Jedi game, you know, you and I play uh, or joke about all the time, you know, and, and OPSEC tends to fall into that line, you know, that line of thinking in that, um, you know, Spags and I, you know, we uh, we've been pursuing the the uh, Mandalorian religion as a side project as well, you know, and and so part of that active misdirection is is the personas that you play, you know, the 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 people that you become in public versus who you are at my dinner table versus who I am when we're drinking, you know, um, you know, uh, adult beverages and and shooting pool or playing foosball or whatever, so. Um, active misdirection takes on different shapes and, and sizes depending on the circle, you know, whether you're in that crew, that mag or that mine, you know, um, and, and then sometimes, uh, you know, it, it has its uses uh, just in general, like like at events, you know, um, at expos where certain people think that you're a, a Mossad agent, you know, <laughs> spying on them. Um, active mix, misdirection is a powerful thing. And, and, and you guys all on this call, you know, it's it's real. Um, and, and so you've, you've been there, you've seen it, you know, that was a, that was a unique experience where a guy just, you know, just completely lost his stuff thinking that uh, one of us was a spy and, you know, yeah. we, we totally had fun with the poor guy. So is uh, I'll tell that story, but, but before I do real quick is um, the blue Kool-Aid and the star Wars part of your active misdirection. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you do not want to ask me this question again. <laughs> the story that uh, data is talking about is uh we were at an event and um, i had a guy just walk up to me out of the blue point data out clear across the room and tell me that that guy was a Mossad agent and i just started laughing i've known data for like ever you know i mean i you know i i've known his you know his uh children since they were little i mean you know i know whether or not this guy is is that and um, I, so I just said, well, really? And so then I just started having fun with him. And, you know, we had a good old time. You? I kind of thought about you? it. Maybe, think, maybe Data's you know, misdirection guys. is just that good. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right? Maybe. No. Um, anyway, Bobby, what do you think? <laughs> you know, for the average person, yes, I would say misdirection is good. For me, it's kind of not really an option. Mm -hmm. um, you can Google the shit out of me if you want to. And you're going to be able to find... 90% of what I did when I worked for the U.S. government, there is no hiding for a person like me. So yeah. I tend to have the exact opposite opinion. I tend to overshare on purpose to see what that gets because oversharing is like chumming the water, man. Mm -hmm. You tell people that you worked here and you've done this and you did this for the army and you worked for Congress, all this other stuff that I can say I've done. You'll get 50 people who will just flock all of a sudden into that conversation and you'll be able to tell very quickly who are the uh, parasites mm -hmm. who are like, well, well, I've done this. And, and that's all they want to say. Mm -hmm. You'll find out very quickly who's inquisitive of really. So what can you tell me about this? And you can kind of start to glean who's in it for knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then you can find just the mouth breathers who are like, I like yellow crayons. And they just walk into the conversation with a box of yellow crayons. So I absolutely think that 98% of people should use misdirection. It's just not really something that I can use at this point, considering I've done the expos and everything else. There's really no hiding for a guy like me. Yeah. yeah you so know, I, think I, I just won't tell you what I don't want you to know. <laughs> right. I mean, right. Well, I think also you can, you know, you can plant a particular question. You know, there's a bunch of stuff going on. 
um, which I'm not going to comment on, by the way, and I would encourage you guys not to, but, um, you know, with the whole Roe versus Wade stuff that's on um, TV yeah. right now, but a, but a properly placed question in a group of people, you can really figure out a lot, you yes. know, into not just what they believe, because I think at the end of the day, I can get along with anybody, no matter what side of the fence they're on, you know, just like on that particular topic. I mean, I can, or any, you know, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't really matter, but can they be tolerant? Right. Are, are they patient enough to listen to my point of view? Or are they just, you know, so sure that they know everything that there can't be anything possibly right you know, out there that's, that's, you know, smarter than them. And um, I like to see that, you know, how, how people handle um, conflict resolution, as we talked about earlier, how they bounce through that. Um, I think it's a, another really good, you know, uh, great. Go ahead. I assume everybody here has heard of Jordan Peterson. Oh, of course. So what you've said, Tag, Jordan Peterson has a very good point that he makes in a lot of his lectures where he says it takes the right and the left to balance each other, mm -hmm. right? If it was all one, you'd have this. If it was all the other, you'd have this. And it takes multiple points of view to actually form society. Mm -hmm. It actually takes multiple points of view where you don't just have a, a, a some beehive where you have 95 drones to one queen, right? Mm -hmm. So I agree with you absolutely that it's more important to work together and be tolerant than it is to have everybody lockstep in the same ideology. Yeah, and I think your 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 statement's super true, but your example was true in the 70s or 80s. But now, since we have one party by two different names, I don't think it matters. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not going to go but, on. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not <laughs> even talking about that. I'm talking about just. Hell, we all, everyone in this call has a little bit different of opinion in many different areas, right? We've all agree on some things. We all right. kind of sort of agree on some things. We all are kind of like, nah, on others. But right. when's the last time any of us tried to take a swing at each other? You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, it's okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the requirements of a MAG. Are, are there, or are there requirements? I mean, should, are there things that should be set out like, you know, hey, we're going to get together at this time or everybody should show up at the camp out or you know, we should all communicate via email. I mean, is there any kind of requirement that you think should be in a MAG? Because in our definition of MAG, it's a very loose fitting organization, right? It's nothing, nothing super tight in our definition, but you know, on the internet, it's the, the, the term MAG is thrown around in a lot of different definitions. And in fact, most of the things I've read about it really refer to the MAG as the tight inner group, when I don't, you know, I refer to it as the middle, right. as the middle group. But um, so Bobby, why don't you talk a little bit about, I know you were, <laughs> ask Bobby about what kind of rules he likes, right? <laughs> um, the, only, the only real uh, rule that I have in that regards is, are you a taker or are you a giver or are you both? If somebody that comes into that circle of the mag, as, as in the definition we're using, if they're the people who, okay, they have a skill, so they're brought in, they're kind of nudged into that position, but all they do is call when they need something. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem lies with the mag. Mm -hmm. Um how many people that you have in your mags are willing to show up to do the shit work before the fun starts? How many people, for example, will come build the range before they'll shoot on the range? Mm -hmm. How many people will come set up the tables before they eat at the potluck? Mm -hmm. How many people will come help you with a flat tire when, or, but will never show up when you need your flat tire changed. So that to me is the absolute litmus test to remain in and potentially move out of the mag is, are you just a taker? Yeah, and I, everything, I, I, else, everything else is just details. Yeah, yeah, Bobby, I would add that the people that stick around to clean up after they ate is a right, better right. sign than people who come early to set up because the the reward is already over. That that's a good point. Yeah, you know, still, the, are you a taker? Are you a giver? Or do you try to be a little of both? Yeah, Hitch, is there should there be any rules, any requirements? I would agree with uh, what Mr. Stagg said. I mean, it's, you know, you got to watch out for the takers and um, yeah, just like we talked before, you know, put out, bait the field, right? Put out there, put things out there and see how people respond, how they handle themselves, how they conduct themselves. Um, you know, that's all, all important to this. Yep. So data, should there be any rules? Um, it depends, you know, Honestly, it depends on what uh, level of the mag you're in, because even the mag is has has rings within rings, um, and and that's unfortunate, you know, because people don't realize that there are mags within mags, mm. uh, oftentimes, and 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 that sounds very complex, and I really don't want to get into that because it, for, for people that are just kind of trying to understand what a mag is in general. To have the the you know multiverse of mags dropped on them right now is probably 
um, probably a difficult concept for them to understand. So uh, for most mags, um, no, uh, I don't think there should be any existential rules or anything that's really super defined uh, in general per se. But now some of your more intimate mags, like the, the there, there's people in my mags, for instance, that have never been to my home and never will be to my home, you know, uh, or get an invitation to my home. But there are plenty of people in, in my mags um, that have been to my home that have helped me with a project, I've helped them with a project, etc. cetera, um, that there are, there are some rules that apply there, you know, and, and like what Spags talked about previously in, in the forms of, can I trust you with my life wipe or wallet? Um, it, it's really kind of, uh, I guess, along the lines of one of those three things in terms of whether or not there's rules associated with your level of mag in my life or my uh, my existence. Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's it's kind of separated into two, two departments. So the mag for the purposes of other groups, you know, I think there should be some rules, whether they're written or unwritten, like, for example, what happens if Fight Club stays at Fight Club, right? I mean, just some some basic, you know, I won't talk about you, you don't talk about me and life's, life's good, right? Those kind of things. But I think from an from a individual perspective, it's about the game of the unwritten rules. And the unwritten rules are, you know, like for me, as you guys all know this, we've talked about this a million times, you know, my top two attributes are attitude and commitment above everything else. Those are my top two. And so, you know, when you talk about commitment, right, are they committed to the mag? Are they committed to the process? Are they committed to help you know, put the barn up or they committed to whatever it is, you know, whatever, whatever happens to be going out there. So I think it's, for me, it's just really more of the unwritten rules. Um, so kind of to close this out, kind of the last topic that I want to talk about today is dealing with problems. And I think that, uh, you know, this video was going to be more controversial than the last and the next one will certainly be more controversial than this one. But there's a couple things out there that I think should be discussed about dealing with conflicts, you know, conflicts, whether it be between groups or conflicts as you know, you get along and we just experienced one, um, you know, just not very long ago with a guy that took offense to something somebody else said and, and, and those kind of things. And uh, the other point I think I want to talk about is sovereignty, because sovereignty is where you're going to lose people. Um, I can tell you, I have seen more groups break apart because of this one word than any other thing out there. And it's probably not even close, you know, at what point in time, and we're going to talk about this more again, as you get into the, the tribe, it's going to become more important. Um, but in reference to um, clashes. And so, um, you know, how do you do that, Bobby? I mean, how, how do you deal with the, because you know, there's going to be conflict. You know that not everybody's going to get along, especially when stress is on, right? But you need to know the answer to this question. Yes. Um, measured response. The, the honest truth is, and there are numerous studies to back this up, 90% of people are drones. They, they don't want to put themselves out there and they go along with whoever the strongest voice in the room is. Mm -hmm. Out of that remaining 10%, four of that are your good guys and six of that are your bad guys. The world has always kind of been, and I don't mean that in like the generic white and black, 100% good, 100% evil. I mean, in which way your, your barometer tips, right? So there's there's always going to be a little more inclination amongst your headstrong people, amongst your A-types to do maybe the wrong thing mm -hmm. than there is maybe to do the right thing because the wrong thing is still easy. It's generally easier. It generally nets you better results quicker and you don't have to wait for your return. Being generally good means you have to wait for your return and you might not always get what you want. And we see this play out in so many areas of modern society where you have the people standing around with their cell phones taking a video of one dude beating the hell out of another dude, right? Mm -hmm. And you can layer that into whatever costume they're wearing at the time. Mm -hmm. the, the fact of the matter is, is that peaceful resolution is not terribly difficult to achieve. It becomes harder to achieve when self-interest drives the narrative mm -hmm. and so okay it's no secret i am an anarchist i believe strongly in sovereignty very very strongly in individual liberty i don't believe in communal rights i don't believe in group rights i believe rights are individual things but at the same time i have an, a, an understanding that no man is an island and you can only be so sovereign to the point where you're going to isolate yourself from everybody around you so again every just every 
every decision you make is economic. There's a give and take. Conflict resolution is not terribly difficult. It's just, it takes work. And so it's going to be either that 6% or that 4% that jumps in at the moment. And so you want to do your best to try to surround yourself with that 4%. You want to try to surround yourself with the guy, with people whose first reaction to every problem isn't shoot him in the face. Like we say at the campfire, when we have our conflicted conversations, you've probably heard me say more than once, anybody whose instant answer to every problem is shoot him in the face is not the kind of person you want, especially when it comes to conflict resolution. And again, you have to give and take. You have to know what you're buying and you have to know what price you're willing to pay for it. And that absolutely holds true in the area of conflict resolution between personalities. Yeah. Well, guys, I got that other beep. I'm going to send you another link. We should, I'm just got a few minutes left and we'll get this thing over, but um, I think we're going to run out because I'd like everyone to talk about that. I think that's a super important. All right, Hitch. So how do you deal with conflict resolution? Yeah. So in, inside the mag, I mean, you know, there's not, uh, you know, it's, it's not your inner, inner circle, your inner group. So time and pressure, you know, you got your guy that, uh, or, or people who may be, um, you know, specialists, like we talked about in, in resolving conflict, the peacemakers and so on, um, you know, ultimately it depends on, on, on the people, right? I mean, if you get one individual who's really agitated and continues to be agitated and continues to create problems, you know, maybe, maybe it's time that they don't get invited back, you know? I mean, that's, it's that simple, but they, if it's a one-off, people have a bad day, people may have something else going on in their life. I mean, you just have to recognize, you know, one of the key components we talked about a long time ago, not everyone's you, you know? And, and put yourself in their position. You never know. They might, they might just found out that their wife was leaving them or something. And, you know, they're having a bad day that day. They show up to, to help out with something. Um, give people the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Cause you know, guy shows up to the farm to help put a barn up the day his wife left him. I want him. That could talk about commitment. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. He's holding his word. <laughs> you know, anyway, so data, what do you think? Uh, with with resolving uh, in, in terms to resolving, how do you, how do you deal with conflict inside the mag? Because you know there will be. Yeah. Um, well, but again, you know, any of you guys know me, I, I've led a, a pretty uh, different life, difficult life. I, I used to fight a lot when I was a kid, you know, and, and I learned early on that leading a life um, of you know, uh, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, left you in a world of blind, toothless people, and so. I, uh, I learned really early on that there was two ways to end an argument, and it was either through bloodshed or through words, um, and, and I've tried both, and I, I've, I've liked to, I'd like to think that I've become you know, efficient or proficient in both, um, but as I've gotten older, I prefer words. Um, I don't heal as well as I used to. Um, I don't heal as fast as I used to, so I, I used to subscribe to a different Bruce Lee philosophy, you know, in the, the one inch punch world of, um, I don't have to be stronger than you. I just have to be faster and more accurate. I, I now subscribe to the water philosophy of being water. You know, water can flow, water can crash. I just try to be fluid um, and, and dynamic in, in resolutions with conflict because just like what we experienced here recently, uh, with a certain thing that I think has been referenced a handful of times, you know, there was a, a, a group of what was perceived to be elders that was asked to participate in a, uh, an impromptu council or counseling session. Um, and we all handle it respectively in our own way, you know, a good cop, bad cop, hammer, um, anvil, and, and kind of water, um, you know, replies. And, and I think we all, um, touched in a certain way and, and handle it in a certain way that got the message across. I think, um, I think handling it for myself, you know, in, in a fluid fashion, or uh, I guess a, a give and take fashion tends to work best for, for me. Yeah. Guys, as we close this thing out, I think it's important that we talk just a little bit about how, you know, every as Hitch, as you mentioned, you know, that not everybody's you and, you know, people have a bad day and this isn't about excluding somebody this isn't about any of those kinds of things everybody you know there's lots of good people out there some of them aren't the right fit and this is just the process of how you try to figure out whether they're not the right fit you know at the end of the day if you judge everybody out there by the way you judge yourself or by the standards you set for yourself you're going to spend your whole life being disappointed you know and i've said those words over and you know and over and over again and so um kind of to end this uh before i give you guys the final word hitch tell me why tolerance is important here well you 
tolerance is important. You don't want to be uh, not tolerated yourself someday. You mm -hmm. know, I have bad days too. And uh, I, I would hope that people give me the gift of the doubt. And I would hope that people would, you know, recognize that, mm -hmm. hey, I've made a mistake and I'm sorry. You know, forgiveness is, is the, one of the key principles of uh, my, my personal faith. Um, you know, so again, um, treat others as you'd want to be treated. I mean, all of that. Golden rule. Yeah. Data? Yeah, no, no, no. That's uh, that golden rule. Like Brother Hitch, you know, was, was just uh, preaching on the mountain about, you know, you you do unto others, you know. I am a huge proponent in, in you know, providence and karma. Um, and I talk about them all the time. So having tolerance for me is, it's like breathing air um, because I, I pray for tolerance. Um, so what kind of hypocrite would I be, right? Yeah. And, you know, Bobby, I saved you to the end on purpose on this particular question. Um, you know, you and I had a conversation just the other day about um, a particular individual, you know, where there's been some issues and um, you and I had this conversation. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about tolerance in reference to a recent experience you just had, because you just had a really good example of this. Sure. Um, tolerance is super important, but it has an expiration date. Yeah. And so you have to understand that the standards by which you ultimately stop showing tolerance is the standard by which you will someday also be judged. Mm -hmm. People remember, and people will remember the negative stuff way more than they remember anything positive. You could do a hundred positive things. And then the one time you screw up, everyone's going to remember that one thing. So tolerance, again, bridging the gaps in geography of personality. It is more important to be tolerant in a group setting and be wrong once in a while than it is to be intolerant and get it wrong once. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Hitch is 100% right about forgiveness. We're all flawed. We're all clay. We all grew up with something in the past. Like Data was saying earlier, we all have a past. We all have something that could have easily pushed us to the dark side. Hopefully and luck luckily, most of us have chosen to not take the dark path. But it doesn't mean that under austere conditions, you won't. Any one of us could become very dark, very quick in the world we're talking about potentially surviving. I mean, we're talking about scenarios where you might lose your kids. You might lose your, your, your significant other. You might lose everything you worked for in a matter of mere minutes, seconds. And it would be very, very irresponsible for those of us who are looked to for the guidance to all of a sudden just come down like a bag of hammers every time something happens. Yeah, you know, I think you, there's a lot you said right there, Bobby, that's just, you know, super, super powerful. And, and um, you know, I think this is why this whole exercise is so important, right? I mean, because if you get into those times where you're on the verge of losing, you know, all of the things that you just mentioned, you know, this is why we do what we do. And this is why we're willing to go down the road and put in the, you know, the hard work um, for that. You know, for me, tolerance is everything. And, you know, if, if you're going to fight about the little itty bittiest things, I mean, I understand taking a stand on things. Right. I mean, you guys know me really, really well. How many times you see me get mad? Not I mean, all of you have seen me get mad, but not very much. Right. I'm going to pick my battles. I'm not going to fight over just these little insignificant things. You know, I'm just not. Um, but anyway, I think tolerance is important. So um, as we end this, I'm going to I want to give you guys all, you know, kind of a final word and reference to the mag um, and then we'll get out of here. But uh, Hitch, I'm going to start with you. you. Got any final words for everybody? Open minded expand your horizons not everyone's you mm -hmm. um you know we talked about tolerance of course here in closing mm -hmm. super important um and time of pressure you know uh, as data had mentioned you know as you bring as you see people in in your mag and you're you're looking at them um if there's ways you can apply that pressure to see how they react you know uh, tag you you mentioned that mm -hmm. um it's just all of those things you got you got to remember all those things you got to write it out or something or draw it on a board you know and and put people's names on it or something that's fine um map it out map it out because it'll all be worthwhile in the end yeah data um and, and parting um i guess I would, I would tell your viewers that it's okay to be an introvert in an extrovert's world um it's okay to uh put yourself out there a little bit um to to get outside of your comfort zone because it is the only place that you will grow. 
it is the only place that you'll find real measurable growth um, that that is going to get you anywhere down the road. So, Bobby, parting words? The mag is fluid. You should be fluid too. Understand the purpose of the mag and don't try to turn it into something it isn't. Mm -hmm. Be water, my friend. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good advice. I think, you know, my parting words <clears throat> to everybody would be that, you know, as you go through this process, keep the end in mind, right? If you don't know where you're going to go, how do you know how you're going to get there? And, you know, you need to know the path. And so part of that for me is, you know, as we're, as, as a couple, a new couple we meet who works their way, you know, into the mag, I'm always thinking about, hey, I really want, or I hope, I pray, right, that I end up with another great family that I get to call family. Um, and so keep the end in mind. And, and then, uh, of course, you know, be tolerant. But uh, anyway, guys, the next video that we're going to film is going to be the crew and um, or the tribe or the family or whatever. Now, this is <laughs> this next video. I'd probably be a little more heated than anyone we've ever done, because there's going to be some big differences in opinion. You know, as we start talking about things like sovereignty and rules and dues and you know, just all the craziness that goes on in you know a lot of, uh, you know, these types of organizations. So I hope you stay tuned. Um, Brother Hitch, thank you very much for coming. Data, thank you very much for coming. Spags, you know, thank you very much for coming. Go be freer, you know, today than you were yesterday. Hold the line. Don't give an inch. Tag out. See you guys. Give an inch. See ya.